Okay, we're working in SketchUp for schools, and we're trying to recreate this uh, IKEA shelving unit. The specifications, the dimensions have, have been taken straight off the IKEA's catalog online, but we have to infer some things. And so the things we have to infer are that the exterior walls of this thing are going to be five centimeters thick, and the interior panels are going to be one centimeter thick. And that should give us nice round numbers for these things to add up to. So if we have five centimeters at the very top and bottom for the top and bottom components, that must mean that 5 plus 5 is 10. 77 minus 10 means that the interior space is going to be 67 centimeters. And each of these cubbies is exactly 33 square. So if we have 67, that's 33 plus 33, and that gives us the 1 centimeter thickness of the interior components. So those are the assumptions that I'm going with. The whole point of this thing is to set up SketchUp to duplicate this for us and create a scale model. Getting started with SketchUp, the first thing I suggest you do is to go to the model info and duplicate the unit lengths in the appropriate format. We're going to be using um, centimeters, so let's go with centimeters here as opposed to millimeters. Let's go to a precision of half a centimeter in case there's going to be some halves up there. We can keep an eye on the uh, dimensions. That should do it for us, and it's going to use length snapping with snap intervals of one centimeter. Okay, we can live with that too. And to get started, I'm going to suggest we start with the rectangle tool and always start with the base and build the footprint and bring it up from there because we have some things to, to lock onto. And as we develop the components, always have an edge or something that things are aligned to. So we'll start with the rectangle. I'm going to start in the middle at the origin. And notice that if we tap the control key, the rectangle tool goes to one of two modes. It either draws out from the center, undo, or it draws from a corner. And in this case, I'm going for the corner and drawing out from the corner like this. And now I have to put my dimensions in. So let's see, that was 77, 39 was the depth according to our specifications, our blueprints here, 39 depth for this bottom piece, 77 wide. That's what we have. Now, push-pull tool. I'm going to use the shortcut, so I hit P for the push-pull tool, or I could grab it from the toolbar there. I'm going to click on that surface, start bringing it up, and I'm going up by 5 centimeters, so I type 5, and I watch the measurement bar in the bottom right corner. Yep, we've got what we need. And when we build these things, we want to build in logical components. So I'm going to now take this thing that we've drawn, and you can see when I hover over to grab surfaces or lines, I'm first of all going to go into the pointer tool, by hitting the space bar. And now if I triple click on this object, it selects the whole thing. And you can see that the surfaces are also selected. I'm going to right mouse click and turn it into a component. A component is a grouped object that we might want to use again. So I'm going to call this thing base, say OK. Once we have this, like I say, when we start drawing, let's draw from known reference points. Like we're going to draw, want to draw the wall from this thing. And I'm going to draw from this corner and drag back to the back wall. When I put the dimensions in, I can just hit comma and then give it the width that I want. The width was going to be five centimeters, so I just type five and hit enter, and I've got a perfectly scaled object. Now this is a new surface that I've created. It hasn't just divided the existing surface because because we turned this into a component, it's like it's been sealed into a sandwich bag. We're drawing outside of that sandwich bag. I'm going to hit the P key for push-pull. I can grab the surface we just drew and I'm going to drag it up. And if you recall, that wall that we're going to be drawing, dragging up, well, maybe we should go back to it. It was going to be 77 centimeters less 10 for the top and the bottom. So it's going to be 67 centimeters. If I go back there, I think I have to undo and start it again. But I'll type in 67 for 67 centimeters, just like that. And that wall is done. Well, almost done. Pointer tool with the space bar. Triple click it. Like this one is already a component, I want to right mouse click this object that I just made and make it into a component. And I'm going to call this one wall and say, OK. Now we're going to use the move tool. It's actually a move copy tool. And I can duplicate the wall on the other side if I'm really careful about where I grab it and where I move it from and that I also hit the right modifier button. So I'm going to go to the move tool. I think M also does that. Right now, if I just click and drag, it's going to move the thing. But if I hit control, watch the cursor gets a little plus. That means it's now a move copy. And if I grab this corner, click it once, and start dragging along this edge, I can get it to snap right into position 
on the far side so it aligns with the outside of the base. No problem. Perfect. And done. Next, I want to draw the middle shelf. And to make this a little bit easier on myself, I'm going to put a guideline in place. I'm going to click and find my tape measure. It shares the same spot, same cubby, as the dimension tool. I'm going to grab this edge here, or a reference to this edge, and start sliding it up. And when it gets to the halfway point, hmm, doesn't seem to show me where I need to stop. But if you hover over the edge here, it will infer and snap at exactly 33.5 centimeters, which you might know is exactly half of 67 centimeters. I've now got myself a guideline. To, to make the shelf, I want to make a shelf and then I want the center of the shelf to align with the center of this wall. To make the shelf, I'm going to go back to my rectangle tool and I've already got an area that's kind of shelf shaped. I'm going to start at this corner and drag to this corner. I'm going to use the push pull tool and pull it up by one centimeter. And then I'm going to hit the space bar, triple click, and turn this shelf into a component. Frankly, because this thing is only going to be used once, I could make it into a group. That means I don't give it a name. Groups work just as well as components in this case. Now the move tool, I'll grab the bottom corner and slide it up the edge. And I can slide it and get it to align to the guideline that I just created. But if the guideline is the midpoint of this wall, I know that it's resting on the midpoint. I want to move this thing down so I can hover and infer over the middle of the component or the group. Click there and slide it down so it aligns the center of the shelf with the center of the wall. And I know this thing should mathematically add up perfectly. Now that that's done, you know what? I can hit the E for eraser and get rid of that guideline. Now I'm going to make a, a, a divider, and I might do the exact same sort of thing, just sort of from a different angle. First off, I want a guideline, so I'll go back and get my tape measure, grab a guideline, and slide along this edge until I can find the midpoint. Oh, there it is right there. There's my guideline. Rectangle tool and I will draw myself a panel over here and then push pull it out one centimeter. Spacebar, triple click, right mouse click, and I'm going to use this above and below so I'll make it into a component called divider and say OK. Use the move tool and I'm going to move it so it's roughly into place and then zoom in on it with the wheel mouse find that midpoint and align the midpoint of the divider with the midpoint of the base. Done. And hit the eraser key. I can do that anytime and just get rid of this. So now I've got myself a perfect shelf or a perfect shelf and divider. And naturally I want to duplicate this so back to my move tool. And to move this thing up I'm going to select the object first, hit the move tool, and I want to move it straight up. And if I'm really careful first of all hit the control so it moves and copies click and start dragging straight up and if you're careful it will go straight up along the x-axis and keep it in alignment so I don't even have to worry about recentering this thing I know it's aligned perfectly we're almost there the last phase is to duplicate this bottom component move control to make a duplicate I'm gonna match this bottom corner here with the top left corner of the wall and this should be a perfect duplicate that's scaled exactly as it is in the blueprints that we had here. 39 deep, 77 wide, 77 tall. To double check that, I'm going to use the dimension tool and put those dimensions on there. And In order to, to make this look a little bit more like blueprints, I'm going to go into my views and I'm going to view it straight from the front with parallel projection. So it's really easy to see that this matches up. I'm going to measure, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to measure this first and say, okay, that's definitely five centimeters for the thickness of this. And the height of this is exactly 67, and the height of this is exactly 5. That's helpful. I can measure the entire height of the whole thing by clicking on this and bringing it all out there like this and remind us that it's 77. Not sure if that's the right format, though, but that just confirms there's that 77 from there to there. Whoops. I'll confirm that the width of this thing is also... Whoops. Undo. 77 wide. The cubbies on the inside, if I click and I drag this down to that point there, yep, there's that 33. Do the same thing there. There's that 33. And the interior size of this thing, well, we can confirm that too. From here to here, definitely 33. From here to here, definitely 33. 
so our dimensions absolutely work out perfectly. And if we wanted to confirm from the uh, right hand side of this thing, there's the right hand view, just to make sure we got the depth 39, exactly as we had our dimensions here. So ladies and gentlemen, there's how you can model this thing precisely and efficiently using components and SketchUp. Try it for yourself. Good luck.